uneven ground. So uh, welcome to the shop update. We're shooting it in my back lot. I call this the back lot. It's where all my metal and junk is. I just got a second container, as you can see, for more of my junk. Actually, we're, I'm prepping the next two years I'm going to take to try and move out of the city. This is also the location where I will ultimately potentially build this building. I've been researching other alternates, which is potentially maybe buying another piece of property right here in the area. That way I could literally take a mortgage and get working immediately as opposed to spending a year and a half building a building. But I still want to build a building, but the new location might be something I buy. Still making a plan. So I found a couple of opportunities which might work very perfectly. So I'm just kind of hedging my bet and doing some financial research. So see where it goes. But in the meantime, we are here in the back lot of uh, Jimmy's Farmhouse, hashtag Jimmy's Farmhouse. You can see what goes on up here. We just finished the Bee Hut, which was an incredible build. It was really stressful for me because I thought I might have taken on more than me and Dave could handle in the allotted time. I literally gave us two days and one day to move and build on site. So we built the whole entire Bee House here in the backyard, which yeah. is about 100 yards from where we are right now. And dismantled it so it's all day day one all day day two at the end of day two we took it apart put what we could on one trailer load nine in the morning drove to the site 10 miles away unloaded that trailer load came back and got the other six giant pieces and went back and put this thing together had to come back on saturday which was yesterday and do some final stuff, details yeah. final details but dave built the whole roof while i was running around trying to find a generator it was a little stressful I mean, it wasn't any kind of like BS TV crap, but yeah. it was just stressful because the client wanted to have a certain amount done in a certain amount of time because he was making a movie for his own advertisement. Right. So they that's, got a large chunk of it on film. Well, and that's why I couldn't jump in there with my cameras because they're shooting a commercial, so it would look like their gear was in the way, so I had to do a lot of distant time lapses. But mm -hmm. you still see an evolution of the building and all the things that's, we that's did wrong. That's the part three that hasn't come out yet? Yeah, the trolls are going to have a field day, you know, the way we did purlings and studs and blah, blah, blah. But you got to keep in mind, we literally made the thing to come completely apart, that modular, the big and go back together somewhere else. And that was only because we couldn't build on site, because there was no electric and there was no access until yeah. a certain date. And the board and batten design lent, it, lent itself to... Sectioning. Modular, yeah, nice sort of overlap, but it was still. I mean, I what do you, each panel was probably 250 pounds, each wall or easy. three. And then the floor sections and the front wall sections, which were the biggest, which you'll see when we put it together, those are probably, I don't know, 300 pounds. Yeah. One, two, three. I got it. I got it. What? What? I want to first acknowledge and thank everybody that sent me some really cool things in the mail. Yellow. My buddy made that years ago. I mean, it's a stupid thing. The face missing? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Everything's got to break. Okay. Ooh, that, that'll have to do, eh? Fix it. See what happens. This is going to fall again. Well, get me Pulsar. So we got some really good stuff in the mail this week. Bob Claggett sent me Pulsar. Bob, thank you so much. This come off of a conversation we had on the air. I had Pulsar when I was a kid. This is from 19... Can you read that? What does that say? I don't have my glasses on. 1976. 1976. The year before Star Wars came out. Show him the big button in the back. He's got a big button on the back and his heart pounds. This could have been a subliminal implant for me to start and do my gurgling guts, which I ended up inventing in 1994. Oh, yeah. 20 years later. And you could uh, put a CD in his head way before CDs were ever invented. Like, like some Matrix shit. A little round disc in his head, yeah. And he read my mind. Did he steal all your ideas? He told me to kill the neighbor. What happened? Neighbor's dead. Pulsar. Thanks, Bob. Uh, lately, when I'm not around, we're getting notes under the door. Yeah. To the gate, so... If you lift up the gate a little bit, you, you stick get, a note under it. You get about a half inch, so you could shove cold dumplings or notes, whatever. Or poop. You could shit down the hole if you'd like. 
We wouldn't even know the difference. It would just be. <laughs> <laughs> I think so bad though. Yeah. <laughs> Master Dynamics sent me these awesome headphones. Thank you guys. I really appreciate that. This was from Saw Stop, and uh, I wanted to say thank you. I blew a break this week cutting mirrored plastic. So if anybody cuts mirrored plastic, turn your bypass on, you'll blow a break. This is a bag of knives from Scott Kipp in St. Paul, Minnesota. Buddy, thank you so much for all oh, this. Cool. I really appreciate that. Um, speaking of knives, this is from Eric Dean. Eric, you sent me I an idea on how to modify a knife and you gave me a really kick-ass knife, which is in the country at the moment. Mm. But this is the box and there's some information in here on the company that made that particular knife. So thank you very much. I'm gonna look into that idea. This is a, a pack of Hooters girls too, so thank you, bro. You can have Jeez. those, just single. Oh, zap. My buddy Kent in South Bend, Indiana sent me a whole box of goodies, Kent. You are the man. He's been supporting me ever since I did my very first show. Thank you, brother. This is just one of the many things he gave me. He gave me like five knives, watches, all kinds of tools. And I just got that handy drill thing. So thank you, brother. Let's see what's in here. Oh my God, oh my God. Fine prints from the desk of Fine Prints. It's funny, you're gonna take over for the dead prints. Yeah. New prints. So thank you, brother. We'll take a look at this. Fine Prints, listen to them on YouTube probably. And there's a, you want that? You can use that better than me. It's oh, topic. cool. Yeah, sure. It's not food. Oh. <laughs> Fine prints. We'll put that on the bandsaw. We got our mailbag mixed up this week, but someone sent us fart bombs for Dave in case he ever has a dry spout. Appreciate that. They taste like shit. And uh, yeah, don't eat them. They're not food. And I think the same person that sent the farts sent this. Uh, a knife coin for you and David scraper for the shop and a surprise for whoever's on them. Greg, thank you, brother. We found you. <laughs> the voice of reason. Protect your digits. Thank you, bro. Appreciate it. And here, this is this is from Greg. Oh. One of those for you, one of those for me. Cool. Right on. And uh, you wanna duke it out? We were gonna do a spike gag. Spike was gonna come up and do the mail. Bah! Spike wants the knife. <laughs> Easy bud. No! All right. So my buddy Peter Carnegie, Peter, thank you so much. He just put a video out on this this week. So thank you. Check out Peter Carnegie's product called the U-Doll. Take a look for that. This is creepy as hell, by the, the way. Mida? The U-Doll. From Peter. Thank you, bro. A long time ago, Aaron, you sent me these. They've been sitting around the shop. I wanted to say thank you. You must be an x-ray technician. You sent me these. Oh, hell yeah. And these are very cool i was just thinking we don't have your name enough around here and mm -hmm. other people agree the more the haters hate the more my name shows up eventually it's going to show up in their bedroom and they're going to wonder how it got there ouch it's all about darista it's all about darista oh that's the sticker you got yeah cool. i need another sticker tip 70 because the one you gave me i was trying to put it on the bandsaw he and ate it, got, it and it got broken up uh aaron thank you for that uh for the x-ray stuff i appreciate that what's in there the stamp's still good if you steam it off. There's no marks across it. We took the sticker, right? It was in there. Oh, there it is. Boom, it's a decal. Nick, thanks, brother. Everybody, the support is so cool when you're putting yourself out there and doing things you like. So, right thank you very much. Okay, back to the junkyard. Ow, my knees. Oh, my knees. You get it. Let's see, let's see how that looks. Greetings from RJ. Accept this bottle of glue as a gift. I like your fun to play with it. I'm gonna try and glue my eyelids and my mouth shut. Do it now. Works perfect. <laughs> Recently I made a joke about gluing your eyes shut with crazy glue. It was a very bad joke. Please don't glue your eyes shut with crazy glue. It was just a joke. I'm Sal Gavinelli. Baba boy! Thank you. Geek Builders, thank you, brother. Sean, Mark, and Charlotte, thank you guys for the love and support. Scarlet. I, I don't know how to read. Thank you guys very much. Big supporter. We watch you online all the time. Habu from another part of the world. Thank you, bro. These, some of these are few hit. Take those. Cool. Hello from Germany. I have questions about your address. You seem to have found it. Uh, I would like to have an autograph from Jimmy, John, and the son for my mother. The son? That would be Rat Boy. Or actually, the artist formerly known as Rat Boy. Matt. Thank you from Germany, brother. And NJR Workshop. Thank you very much, Michigan Made. Thank you, Nick Ryan. Got your sticker in house. Thank you, brother. And Burks. Does it say Burks or Burkeys? Burks. Burks Workshop. 
Thank you. I went to school with a guy okay. named Matthew Burke, but I don't think that's him because he would have just called me. So thank you guys. I appreciate that. And Scott Kipp sent us all these knives and curious. What are you trying to tell me, bro? Are you trolling me? What's up, dude? Are you trolling me? You tell me? You telling me that I'm not doing something right? Thank you. It's, uh, okay. Oh, wait, one more. Is it rolling? Yeah, <coughs> I hope. Rowdy Penguin Productions. Thank you, bro. Oh, that's like a fancy coin. Oh, cool. Look at that. I want one. Oh, I have one. That is yours. Well, this is from my bro, Rory May, Dirty Smith. Check out his channel. He has all these cool stickers available, too. They're really funny. Yeah. He's a graphic designer at heart, and I'm sure he invented all of these himself. And they're really high quality. So is his work. And so is his work, of course. Check it out. Mm -hmm. Great stuff. Thanks, Rory. Thanks for the support, brother. Oh. Let's go. You, you want it? Alright, sure. You take the stairs, I'm gonna take the elevator. Are you, ta <laughs> you taking the spiral staircase? <laughs> Am I out of camera? I can't get any I think so. You... <sighs> I'm gonna take the elevator. It's a little delayed. <laughs> so thank you for all the wonderful objects and stickers and things that you send. That's really cool. We both love that. And uh, Dave, why don't you give a shop update about your shop in Queens, which a lot of people yeah. are asking about. Mm -hmm. It's mainly metalworking stuff right now, but it, it's a good space. It's slow going because being tied up with you and doing stuff, putting bread on the table, and then this is like a third. It's my fault. Well, no, I mean, you're just here while it happens. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna do a shop tour. Um, it was a funny thing, I waited a little bit because a mask company after Atlanta had approached me for a respirator, and I said, cool, I'm about to clean up a bunch of junk in my shop. I could make like a, you know, horror f film style short bit of me in like the dust cloud in the mist and then, yeah. you know, and then like still uh, alive, not dead at the end, you know, what a great pitch, but they didn't go for it, so. Um, they didn't? No. <laughs> so I, I, uh. I think the same mask company emailed me and I haven't emailed them back. I probably won't now that they didn't hear you. Uh, they were cordial and everything. I just thought that would be a cool, more original way to sell a product rather than reading a, a script that everyone hears, you know what I mean? Yeah. Today is April 24th. Let's take a look and see some of the questions that we asked. People ask questions. There's only a few at the time of taping, so if we didn't get you, we'll get you next time. Nick Carruthers asks, Jimmy, David, do you plan to employ the beavers on your upstate property in your woodworking projects? Did you get any video of the beavers? I would. That's a beaver joke. Did you fly the drone over the... Yeah, but I'm sure. Those little fuckers are so sneaky. Yeah, you can't find them. But the idea is... I've recovered some of the wood that the beavers have cut down in my swing video um, and uh, some of the other videos I made where I kind of use natural outdoor stuff. They cut down a lot, of, a lot of trees and they just cut down a really, they were about to cut down a giant one. I, it might be on my Instagram where they cut into the, the whole bottom quite a bit. Uh, okay, uh, David Welder, I have a question for both Yins. What both of Yins' next big project? That's from Michael Lila. He must be in uh, Pittsburgh when he writes Yins. Yins is like a word. It's a plural for YouTube. Yins. Like the Utes. Utes. Yins. So my big project I just finished was the Bee Hut for Dave as well. <laughs> so my next big project is editing hours and hours of footage down to a, a digestible length. Mine's a nap. <laughs> no, that was pretty crazy a for the sandwich, two of us. Probably. Um, what is going to be my next big project? I just putting I'm putting out a knife video right now. It's probably publishing as we write this, as we as we tape this. Um, I have to make a big table for a, a Lincoln Electric video. So I'm going to make a, a like a steel workstation. That's going to be a next semi-involved video. And I'm still working on some videos for the kindergarten room that I'm working over. Uh, I'm going to be putting out a video very shortly of a few of the tables. There's a lot of tables, but there's just going to be a few of these small tables that the kids will sit at. Since even before this build, the, the bee bungalow, I'm doing the side project with our friend Howard. Oh, right. So I've been doing behind the scenes stuff on another concept. You want to introduce a, that concept? Another channel, and it will be called Uncommon Sense. That's something that we're all working on, us and friends. It's a whole new channel. Our friend Howard is driving the boat there, and it's pretty interesting. It's basically it's like a common variety sense lessons. Show. Yeah, it's like a variety show that sort of tricks you into learning or coaxes you via maybe laughs and entertainment to learn some stuff. So it's like, you know, we, we did a bit on how to change a diaper, you know, and the idea is. It's a shitty situation, right? So it's like a bank heist, as you put it. Yeah. You want to be in and out and clean. Um, 
what else we Different talked about techniques wrapping up uh, extension cords they're like we're gonna leave one minute shop. tip videos basically go to an EMT for example right and uh, and I say what are three things misconceptions maybe that that people have when they come into the ER you know like don't pull the knife out before you get there uh, that stuff like that so just trying to get to the meat and potatoes what did you say about pulling the knife out it was bleeding don't pull the knife out until you get to the hospital when if you get stabbed and you get in you know that's the what worst if thing you, you get can stabbed do and the guy takes his knife with him after he stabs you you ask him to leave it i in? don't know i mean that's <laughs> cross that bridge when you get there all right so that's on common sense look out for that that's going to be coming yeah it's going to be too, it's going to be cool and it's turning into something pretty wild so yeah and everybody wants to be involved so if people have like good bits and that's the other thing is then we're going to launch the channel but then crowdsource and see what you guys want to do howard our buddy is a, a financial uh, he, he's a he's a money whisperer you know he he's started over 30 businesses he's got a lot of experience on that and so to wrap it up and then you have anything to contribute or to contribute yeah maybe we meet a mechanic or uh, i don't know all right so uh we have a question from elijah taylor jimmy david how do you deal effectively with your different approaches when working together on the same project i they think they're beneficial yeah that's Dave. what I always liked about him. When I first got there, it's always been a mentality of like the common goal. You know, not he doesn't need to be the hot shot, uh, and I feel the same way. So we meshed in that yeah. direction. But being able to see the common goal without egos or or yeah. mashing our egos together to find that good answer. Yeah, no, no, for sure. Like like I said it before, I said it again. I I left for an hour or two to go fix the generator and go run for supplies for supplies and I came back and Dave had half the roof done and I looked at that I said thank God well it was a whole new animal too that's the thing you know no, it's funny too is because I have a vision and I think oh this is the way to do it and you go well why don't you do that I'm like well that's what we're gonna do now because it's the better solution all right so yeah no we work together well which is why we've been together for 10 years yeah best uh, gig I ever had let's see uh, there's another question what would you say to someone who just started a YouTube I say this all the time I say it Casey Neistat says it everybody says it you just got to make really good content and you got to do it consistently. If you make one video, you know, every two months, you're not going to catch traction. I mean, obviously, if you make any video that can go viral, then that's just luck of the draw. It doesn't matter. You don't have to make more than one. My favorite videos are the least viewed. Content. You really have to like look at your footage and think to yourself, is this good? Apple, just consider the information, you know, because yeah. you can show things visually. And then maybe you don't need to say, here's what I'm about to do. You could jump right to it. That just do saves it. time. That keeps eyeballs there. I don't know. I mean, yeah. just experiment too. It's digital. We don't have to run down to get shitty films developed that didn't Work. come out anyway. Yeah. You know, no one ever has to see it. Just fucking go for it, man. It's There's room for everybody. A cool. friend in Long Island, I think. Dynami Palatoki. I'm sorry. Dynami? I'm probably Plotiki. saying it. Plotk. 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 All right, we get the lights going. Um, David, Jimmy, how do you fit big projects in a small shop? Well, you bring them down in little tiny pieces, you connect them together in pieces that just fit through the door, and then when you bring them to the site, you put them together in pieces that never go outside the door that they came through to begin with. So that's it. We have to build everything modular. Even if I had a giant shop here and I built everything that I needed to build, it would have to eventually go to a Manhattan apartment building and get in an elevator. So yeah. the fact that it has to leave my shop means it also ultimately has to go into somebody else's home. So everything that is large gets built modular. Because it's, you know, like that barn. There's a lot of overlapping and things oh, yeah. that had to then come undone. And, you know, yep. it's a whole third of the, probably 30% of the project. Yeah, no, it's like engineering this thing. Uh, from Andrew Setters, Jimmy, David, what is the one skill or tool you've never tried but you want to? Um, I've tried mostly everything, but I'm not good at everything, uh, of course. Blacksmithing, I would like to keep working on. I talked about that probably in the first shot video. Glass oh, blowing yeah. is something that I've actually experimented with, but that is such a meticulous, time-consuming, patient-needing yeah. discipline. And that's like a, that's a complete lifestyle. That's like, you know, that, that's like you got to change everything to get into glass blowing. You can't just do that part-time. So. Glass blowing is something I always wanted to do, but I just know my current lifestyle, I'll never be able to do it. I'd like to blacksmith more, for sure. Um, Leatherworking is something I'm getting into. I'm halfway through a video right now. I was that's just going to be gonna cool. Say, Leatherworking. You, you inspired me with the bag, that beautiful bag you're working on. Uh, there's really tight stitching on some serious thick leather, and I've never really approached that, and I'm fascinated by tooling leather. Um, so I think I want to go in that direction and I also I work from shit that sort of shows up in my life so you know it's like I would have never thought of making a we have the 20 minutes cool <laughs>
So you started were, getting dark. What was your inspiration for starting to make your own YouTube videos? That was from Dylan, Dylan Feenley. Feenley? Um, I know for me it was revenge because the TV business kind of let me go and I was upset about that. And I was like, I'm going to show them. But then soon I realized how I was inspiring so many people and that really became my motivation. So at first it was to try and attract the TV business back to paying attention to me because I had lost interest when I did my my, uh, my Discovery Channel show, Dirty Money. Came and went too quickly. And uh, Dave? You. <laughs> me. I actually so, did. I remember. By I'm... proxy, the same exact thing, I think. Since I moved down to the city, I've been interested in making videos, but I was worried about being in Jimmy's shop, looking like his brand and all this. He said, fuck it, just go for it, don't be a bitch. I and said, uh, you, know, you have such a style that everybody loves. Well, and I you assured it. me that I'd find it, which is, you know, so I just went for it, and now I can't get away. I love it. Uh, from Paul Mayette. Paul, thank you so much for your love and support, always. Um, Jimmy, David, how do you each take your coffee? Little bit of milk and one Splenda. Black like my metal. That's right. We have a question talking about the beehive. Uh, considering the time constraints, was it difficult to move? Yes. yes. Oh, it was a big pain <laughs> in the balls. It fucking sucked. But we did it. Oh, my big ass knife video just published. I already got a, I got a thank you from, uh, a like from Paul Mayette. Nice, see that? Yeah. yeah. I'd like to also, that's, for, that's it for the questions for now, but I'd also like to thank everybody that got my my resin figurine and yeah. it's having fun modifying it. Isn't that uh, amazing? You got. I, I would start naming a few people, but I know I'm going to leave some people out. So all you brothers in arms in the YouTube world that have been playing with my figurine and, and having fun with it, I love it. And it's, <laughs> it's so awesome. I really, really appreciate it. And uh, people keep asking me lately, are you annoyed that people use my name in a video just to get views? You could name the name of the video Doresta's 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 video. I don't care. It it's all matter. about Dorista. It's all about Dorista, so I don't care. And don't go to other channels and troll them because I am not sending you. Please do not do that. <laughs> I know. Um, some people anything have else? funny ideas. No, I mean, to, to go with that, that's super cool. I have some ideas of my own. I'm going to take a bubble bath with my Jimmy doll, put a little bubble beard on him, and we're going to sing some, you know, some folk songs maybe, dive a little bit. What do you mean dive? Go, you know, go under. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I have a couple of extra dolls in the in the workshop, like parts and broken pits that the factory sent me. So, behind the scenes, Jimmy was feeling very weird about it. Thought it was a little weird and narcissistic, and it took a little coaxing to get him into the idea. And he still wasn't. And now I think seeing this amazing group of people, uh, the, I mean, what kind of support is that? That's amazing. It's, it's amazing, right? And I just have to, I just saw Tim's cool. hula doll. So Tim, thank you, brother. And I owe <laughs> awesome. Tim. Tim, I still owe you that saw. Don't worry, we're gonna bring it over. Yeah. As soon as the time breaks. As soon as Vance is ready. Cool. I think that's about it. That's it. The sun is going down. We're losing light. All right. Thank you. Oh, by the way, I'll keep fixing up this truck. I didn't forget about it. Now I finally have uh, the opportunity to, to do some more work on it. So. Yeah. All right. Thank, Thank you, you, everybody. See ya.